We're with uh, Gabby, Bruce Boudreau. Listen, um, my sense is that Vegas has become not not just the Stanley Cup champions, but a popular place for players to want to play. Uh, and uh, we shouldn't be that surprised. I mean, the crowds have been fantastic. They're, the games are energetic. The team has been good since day one. Um, I lived there, you know, and so I know it's a, a great place to live. Um, do you agree? Do you think Vegas is probably, like, if you were going to go around to players, especially free agents, and ask if you can play anywhere, where would you play? Would Vegas be at or near the top of the list? If you if you um, can count out hometowns, okay? Yeah. Like, I mean, let's just say, I mean, if Toronto boy might want to be in Toronto, for example. But, I mean, Vegas would be at the top of everybody's list, along with Dallas and Florida. Any st- Tennessee, <laughs> any team that doesn't have state tax, they're there. But, I mean, also, you know one thing about the ownership and the management of uh, – Vegas is they're there to win. So if you've got, if you're a guy that wants to win and you, and you've got that cachet where you can say I can go most places, but I want to win, Vegas would probably be in the top two or three on your list on any team. As a visiting coach, was Vegas a distraction to go to? I don't think so. You know what? I mean, uh, uh, I played in all six years against them, and we've only lost one game. So I mean, uh, a lot of times. You know, teams will have a rookie party there or something like that. But it's if they have time off and you they play the guilty game, you know, like, I mean, yeah, the coach let us run tonight and had a good time. So we're going to make sure that they want to do it again and uh, uh, that we can do it again. And so uh, I've never found it a distraction. Um, uh, I think, you know, the, there's a lot of glitter and everything else and you could make it and go out all night long if you wanted to. But. My teams, uh, you know, good or bad, have been pretty good in Vegas. The, the only game we lost was a 3-2 game to them that we should have won. You know, because the, the different different managers and coaches have different philosophies. Lots of guys wanted to be in and out in a day. And the other other guys said, no, let's give them three days there. And and we'll, we will have the rookie party and give them an extra day off in Vegas. So it, 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 I think it actually changed over the six years of how teams manage their travel in and out of Las Vegas. I, I agree with you. And um, uh, I, I guess it's how they handle it uh, the first time is whether they get a chance to do it a second time. So they always want to do it a second time. So they handle it. A good. And we had our rookie party in band there this year and all the players went golfing at that wind course. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it like it costs a thousand bucks or something to get on. And they ended up, uh, uh, having a great time, great meal and everything. We ended up, w- and we had back-to-back games in Vegas and in Colorado, and, and we won both those games. So, I mean, uh, I would have liked them to party every day, quite <laughs> frankly, and I might still be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned George McPhee. Uh, you have a, you've had a long relationship with George. Um, tell me what you, uh, and I know you didn't watch the last 10 minutes, but uh, tell us about your relationship with McPhee and 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 what he means to you and and what he means to the game. Well, I love the guy first of all, and I mean you don't say that too many times when a guy fires you. But uh, um, he gave me my first chance, and probably would have been the only guy to ever give me a chance at that point. And uh, uh, and he stood with me. I remember that after the first. 10 days when I was there, he says, I want you to be my coach for a long time. And then, and when he did eventually let me go, I know it wasn't him that wanted it. I knew it was the ownership that wanted uh, uh, the change. And he gave me a big hug and uh, not too many guys hug you when you get fired and said, hopefully we'll work together again. And so I've always used him for me as a mentor, as if if I needed, uh, if I was struggling with something, whether I was in Anaheim, uh, Minnesota, or uh, Vancouver, I would always call him, and he would give me great advice. And uh, so, I mean, uh, and what he's meant to the game is you're never going to find a man with more integrity 
You you look at George, he says and does the right things. I remember when we won the Calder Cup, quick story, he turned around to me in the plane and he said, he said, enjoy the process. That's where it all is. It's the process of getting there. It's not just the win. And like, I mean, you could even see him from what uh, my wife told me uh, in the last game. He's walking around the ice and, you know, still with the, the calmness and the coolness, he pats somebody on the back, but he would, that's just the way George is. And, uh, uh, and one heck of an intelligent hockey guy, but he thinks everything. And obviously when Kelly McCrimmon was a surprise hiring for him, but it was the right one. So he knew what he was doing there too. Yeah. You were, you were a, um, you went in deep in playoffs with George. You're the coach and he's the manager. How much involvement day to day, during a playoff series would you have with him very little we would sit and talk you know he would come down after a practice uh um and you know ask me questions but he he let the coaches coach that's one thing you love about george he did not i've had many or a few managers uh in that since that time come down and and do this and do that and just uh like really interfere but George was never one to interfere. He would ask you questions. And he, his biggest thing was do the thing that you think will help us win. And that, that was the biggest thing for him. He didn't care if I was sitting um, the, the top player or the bottom player. When I went to the minors and it started in, in, in Hershey, he said, I don't care if it's a first-round pick or a, or a walk-on. If the first-round pick isn't as good as the next guy, we're not playing him. We're – we're here to win and we're developing through winning. And that's what I loved about one of the things I loved about him is, is he wanted to win and he thinks the best way to develop is to win. And I totally agree. Well, I don't know how many expansion franchises there will be in the future, but McPhee sort of changed the way an expansion franchise should be built. Uh, it should be done on day one with the way he did Vegas. Because what he did in Vegas in those first few weeks was unlike any anyone else had ever done with an expansion franchise, was it not? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, everything was so thought out from his picks to where he wanted to play them and fits and like I mean, I I bet like I mean he would, and I have no idea on this, but I'm betting that it, when they're doing the expansion draft, he's going, okay, we need this guy. To and this guy to be our number one D, this one to be our goalie, and he picks Flurry right away. And um, he knew what he was doing. He knew the team he was trying to build from the expansion draft on. Well, he also knew that there was more than one way to get a guy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so he was not afraid to make trades or do things uh, that were that ultimately all wound up being positive for the Vegas Golden Knights. And um, yeah, I think no, you, no. you, you got to respect that, don't you? I respect everything he did like i mean he's tough like i mean he would the one thing about george is he's not afraid to make the tough decisions whether you like it or not right He'll protect you if it's necessary but i mean getting rid of flurry must have been a very very difficult decision but they knew they had to do it if they wanted to continue to go on the on the course that they were going right so i mean um to get a rid, get rid of Suzuki because they wanted Pacioretty to get rid of all these high draft choices because they needed to go over and and get Eichel and Petrangelo and Stone and pay them all big money. Th these are tough moves to make, and they found ways to fit them in under the cap, and um, and, and they did it. But those those are that takes courage, you know. Sure, it does.